as you know, most of ha- at least 50% of this podcast group has children. Uh, so maybe mostly relevant. But I assume that a lot of our listeners, the ones that do listen anyway, have kids. And we are all stuck at home with our children. And at least in New York, I mean, I don't know how long they've been out of school. It's been a while. All over the country, homeschooling again. Uh, Is it time to teach your kids STEM? And off of that, should you buy your children a 3D printer? It's an interesting question. I, I... I feel like I have seen this. So I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old and I have seen from social media and, you know, just other co-workers and colleagues and stuff like that. Everybody Zoom chatting. I've met a lot of other co-workers, kids and stuff like that. I have probably seen four or five people on social media talking about, oh, it's my kid's birthday in quarantine and instead of a bike, I got him a 3D printer. And I've, I've heard that so many times. It feels like that's a really cool gift. Like for the first time I'm thinking about it, like my kid's birthday is in June. I'm like, he would really like a 3D printer because then we could make so much cool stuff and it ties in with STEM curriculum. I think that with so many schools um, working, doing remote and distance learning, there is a loss of hands-on STEM learning that kids would otherwise get in practical applications in school. Having a home hobby 3D printer to tinker with and for kids to learn on and stuff like that, I think it's a great resource. I think yeah, you should my- definitely buy them a 3D printer. I would have loved a 3D printer as a kid. I would have just gone nuts with it. Oh, I, I'm sure. Back in the day, I would make stuff by like using a Dremel to cut plexiglass to make plastic parts for things. And just thinking about having to do that now like makes me so upset because 3D printers are so cheap now compared to what they were back when, when I was growing up. I think it's a, a great idea. Um I would recommend getting a kit, though, if you're going to get one. Don't get one that's fully assembled. Um, a lot of the kits now, they go together like in 10, 15 minutes. Even. Like snap together pieces mm-hmm. and electronics and stuff. Right. It's essentially yeah. two halves of your printer, and you have to put in like four screws to put it together um, in a lot of cases. Um, and I feel like you learn more by doing that. Are there, yeah, that way um, if it breaks, you can fix it. Too, right if you know how that, to put it that together. too that's helpful yeah i mean plus as a selfish parent there's a lot of things that i could probably use a 3d printer for around the house that's like all right well if he's got one we've got one and i can use it as i see fit too so maybe that's maybe that's driving some of it <laughs> yeah, secretly i secretly want one <laughs> yeah you can hear my kids playing above me probably so <laughs> i'm on the fence on this one I uh, I don't think I would until they're like middle school or high school, but anything before then, I think it's a waste. But I also value learning to build stuff with your hands and not just with 3D printing. I think that's an important step. I think there's a lot of things that are toyfied and gamified where kids can like... Um, I remember when my son turned four, we got him, uh, didn't get him chutes and ladders or Candyland. It was a uh, baby's learn to code. And it was like toddler coding. And it was, you know, just a sequence of things. But it was like the basic tenets of like learning computer programming and stuff. None of it stuck. But still, um, to, to, to your point, Ben, I wish that I had, you know, I was more mechanically minded and did more things with my hands because my kids would probably do more things with my hands. But they see me tinker with electronics and tinker with like this robotic R2-D2 that you can put together that rolls around with the controls that, you know, Wi-Fi to your phone. That kind of stuff gets, you know, the parents excited too. I got to share something with you. So talk about your kids building stuff. Let me see if I can. Can you guys see that? Not that's yet. my son. Oh, that oh, look is at that. my son. I and we're building toy model toy cars, and he's sanding the wheels. I I probably overprotected him a little bit <laughs> with the <laughs> the ear pro and the face shield, but he'd be safe to go to like Walmart and that now too. Yeah, um, <laughs> but if you're giving him if you're giving him a sand uh, a sander, he'd probably be okay with a a, a basic three D printer. Right. Yeah, I but I, I really value and so does my whole family working with your hands and learning to build stuff on your own. And I think that 3D printers can absolutely do that. Like you can't except with a few things, you can't like build something and it's fully assembled or print something. 
you have to assemble it yourself and you have to do slight modifications, whether that's sanding, painting, or just assembly. So I think when my three-year-old, almost four-year-old is, I don't know, whatever middle school age is, I have no idea because he's not even in preschool yet. 10, 11. Like sure, that around then. I think that's when it would be worth it. Yeah. Until then, I'm just going to like email Ken or Adam and be like, hey, <laughs> can you make this? Do you guys yeah, have, yeah. I was going to ask, um, do we have any resources that we could point people to that are like places to start? And maybe we could uh, in include some links and some cards in the video that are maybe websites where, you know, if I even if I had a home 3D printer, I'm not CAD savvy enough to feed it a model that it could produce and stand on its own. So are there like, you know, outside of Google Sketch and things like that, are there places that you guys know from the um, hobby community? Oh, there's so many. Um, I'm sure. I know I've got got my ideas. I'll let Ken go first. If you were teaching a five year old <laughs> about 3D printing, what software would you give them? Softwares. Um it really depends. Maybe at that age, you might not, that might be a little young for, for doing like param, not parametric modeling, but just modeling with shapes. Um, yeah, I don't know what exact age I would start introducing that. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine if, if a kid can go on a computer and like play games on a computer, he can probably handle working with shapes and blocks and putting those together, subtracting mm -hmm. from each other to make their own things. I'm going to sound like every I, other old parent, but my kid can do everything better on the computer than I can. And yeah. <laughs> I grew up with it too. Like the, the biggest thing that I would push people to do is I, I would encourage you to get one, but I've seen a lot of like kid friendly printers that have come onto the market. They try to create these self-serve ecosystems where you can just pick a model on an app or on a, a web page and it'll just print. Well, that's nice. You can have it print a bunch of trinkets for you, but the real value and the educational value of a printer is the the modeling, the the coming up with your own design and making your own idea or thing come to life. Um, it defeats yeah, the purpose. When it, what? It defeats the purpose. If you have an app where you can choose like out of a four hundred different toys and models, what's the Would point it still of a three D printer? It'd still be fun, and I think you anything. can still you can still teach people about like like basic mechanics and like how it's working, teach, teach them about the machine itself and how it works. But I think the real value is in the, the making your own models. I mean, I still, I still download stuff and print it just for fun. Cause I like the, the trinkets at home, but more often than not, I tend to make, make things I print. now. We still have a, uh, a flexi dinosaur that you printed for my daughter last year, Ken, that she adores and sits on her dresser every night and she shows it off to her friends. And then when her little friends come in the house, when they did, um, it was, oh, cool. Hey, check out my, you know, this awesome 3D printed thing that my, you know, Mr. Ken and my dad's company made. And it's like a conversation starter for her and her little buddies. It's cool. Mr. Ken. <laughs> Mr. Ken. I love it. But one of the one of the big things like Adam kind of alluded to, the reason I think it's more practical now than it was when we were in middle school, high school was the cheapest 3D printer you could get back in what, 2010, 2012 was fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. And that's that's really where they were. Now you can get a a fairly reliable machine for about two hundred fifty bucks. I see, so I think it's competing more with like. I'm going to get my kid a bike or I'm going to get him an Xbox or I'm going to get him a, a, a switch or I'm going to get him a 3d printer. And if you've got kids that are, you know, in that kind of mindset, I think it's great. I think it's cool. Wish I had when I was a kid. Yeah. And imagine all the toys you wouldn't have to throw out. Yeah. Mr. GI Joe breaks his arm. All right. We'll just try to like make him a new one. Place it. Yeah. Make him a new one. <laughs> That's a really good point. There are so many breakable and wearable parts on kids' toys. That's a really good point. <laughs> Even just like because bikes and scooters and yeah, because yeah. where do you get that piece? That that's there's a million cases for that. Um, yeah. 3D printers for end of use parts. Yeah, and it's always some tiny little piece that you like almost could glue back together, but you can't. You have all the measurements right there. It's right in front of you. Like the uh, like the baseball the tee that I'm still waiting on, Ken. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Kevin, I I saw like the rough one that I tried to put together on my bookshelf the other day, and I was like, huh. The, I wonder the, how that ever turned out. The, the T. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, the this the backstory to that is uh, for those who don't know our inner workings of uh, office chatter. Um, my kid smashed his uh, baseball tee with a bat at practice last summer uh, or last baseball season, and I brought it in to make a new coupling that just you know attaches from the part that extends up and down. And it was promising, but I don't think I've actually seen a final product yet. The, the, <laughs> it's been packed away, but it's all right. It's already it's already springtime, even though it's not officially baseball season. He's got to learn to hit the ball from a pitcher at some point anyway, right? <laughs> right. Just and he does, early. but th- there are there are lots of practical, Ben will tell you, there are lots of practical hitting drills that adults do on tees or teenagers and high school kids do. So. Oh, 100%. One day, T-work one day. Like, but you know what? If I had my own, I wouldn't have had to bug Ken. <laughs> <laughs> you, I would have just been interesting to see you model it. That's the more challenging part. And, and yes, yeah, that is the challenging <laughs> part. And I probably would have gotten frustrated and quit about 20 seconds in. But then who knows? My kid could have taken, <laughs> taken up the mantle and done it himself. I have another question for you. I'm going to bring it back in. I'm going to pull it back into 3D printers for kids. <laughs> what about a pen? Is it like a, a segue? Yeah. 3D, 3D printing 3D pen. pen? As no, like don't waste the way. Time. <laughs> no? Uh, don't waste for, your time. It's not, it's not kid, that great. A lot of them are made very cheaply, and they break pretty quickly. Um, it's it's a lot like a hot glue gun. It is a motorized hot glue gun. Um, I I don't really see the the appeal of it. I mean, I would I would put it in the same bucket as other craft activities like three D pen, popsicle stick building. It's all having kind a of cricket to me. Vinyl cutter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 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 only successful thing I've seen people reliably do with a pen cuz if you've ever tried to use one it's borderline impossible because you have to perfectly match its speed, its extrusion speed and how fast you move your arm. So easy. If you're not it, it seems it's very really challenging. hard to do some of those crazy things they show on the advertisements. But I mean I've seen people that take like just a flat piece of paper and draw a 2D item using the plastic and then peeling it off the paper and having a an object for shit for say yeah. but it's not it's not really as 3D as a, a a regular printer could get you so all the mommy blogs saying that you need a pen like that's how you get your kids into 3D printing are just straight out wrong i think that's how you discourage people from <laughs> doing it could be a bad experience for them that's interesting it could be i wouldn't have thought about that but i guess my my take on it is that it doesn't really teach them about 3D printing because it's more crafty rather than STEM related um, versus a 3D printer. You really get to learn about design and 3D design and machine code and all of these other little nuances that they could apply to but like also a future career. Mechanics and engineering and structural integrity and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the the cheaper printers have like big Facebook communities and Thingiverse communities where they'll uh, they'll talk shop with each other and they'll post upgrades that you can do to your machines. And so uh, a lot of the cheaper machines can become like learning platforms about 3D printing or about mechanics um, if if you want them to be that. Um, so million dollar question then, Adam. Are we ever closer to the age where, you know, it was once unimaginable that everybody would have a computer at home? Is it not unimaginable now that everybody has a 3D printer at home in the next 25 years? What, 25 years is long. Is, is a long okay, 10 years. Time, 10 years. In, in my even. mind. Um, I think, uh, I think we're, we're definitely getting close. Um, I think there's still some, some usability challenges um, to using a 3D printer. But... I think for for people that like making things, it it absolutely makes sense to have a 3D printer. Like, Ben, it would make sense, in my opinion, for you to have a 3D printer Uh, just because you like woodworking, you like making things. It's just like another tool at this point. Like, because 3D printers have come down in price to the point where you can go buy a really nice table saw or you can buy a 3D printer with roughly the same amount of money, it's, it's just another tool to have in your shop. I've been thinking about that, at least for jigs and fixtures. There are so many times where, like, 
I have to spend a whole day. It's so funny. We've talked about this before, but when uh, I, I suck at sharpening knives, especially when I just built it and it's a flat billet or not built. It's like a, it's still like a quarter of an inch thick, 16th, whatever it is. I can't get it sharp. And I've spent days making different fixtures to try to get it sharp and watched a video on it. It's like, oh yeah, I just 3D print this. I was like, oh, that'd be nice. And I think that was even before I was working here. But absolutely. Um, as long as they can deal with like a ton of sawdust or would I have to like keep it in its own case? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> How durable are they? Printers and sawdust do not get along well. I, I keep, didn't think keep so. them very well separated. <laughs> um, keep it in the kitchen. I will maybe. keep it in the shop then. <laughs> not not in the shop, but in your in your home office. That's where it goes, and you make the fixture in the office and can take it out to the shop. Um, uh, funny uh, funny story. I got kicked out of my office, so now I'm in my bedroom. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So I don't think my wife would appreciate having a, a printer in bedroom, a, the home bedroom office. But. <laughs> Eventually. Anyway, Kevin, I feel I like we you. didn't really get to the, the heart of your question and what resources would we suggest to, to kids or families who are getting into 3D printing. And I want to recommend a program that is probably already installed on every one of your computers. It's free. It's easy to use. It's called Microsoft 3D Builder. It's assuming uh, you don't have a Mac. <laughs> Assuming you don't have a Mac. If you have a Mac, it's not on your computer. But for Windows 10 users, it already comes installed on your computer. It's free. It's easy to use. Uh, essentially, you just drag, click and drag shapes. You can resize them. You can add and subtract shapes. So if you want a block with holes in it, you would make some cylinders and position them wherever you want and then tell it to cut the cylinders out of the blocks. Um, for even doing some some minor adjustments to files that you download online. It can be a really, a really nice tool. Nice. And then you said Thingiverse and um, I mean, there's other like prefab places where you can get models for things and stuff like that. Yeah. Thingiverse cool. is, is definitely the most popular if you're just going to, to look for a design online. Um, My Mini Factory is another really good one. Um, GrabCAD. GrabCAD Community has, mm -hmm. a, has a whole bunch of 3D models. Those tend to be more engineer focused, whereas if you want just like a lizard, you can go on Thingiverse and find one. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, 